Hey everybody, welcome to Fingerstyle Guitar number four. In this series, we are going to start Tommy Emanuel's version of Windy and Warm. Uh, this is a tune he heard Chet Atkins playing uh, many years ago, back in about, I think he said 1962, and it really inspired him to play. Uh, I think it was written by John Loudermilk. I'm going to double check that, if it's, uh, but I, I believe that's correct. And uh, But anyway, it was a song that really inspired him to play, and it is not an easy time to play, especially for the, for the first time you go through it. And there are three sections to this tune uh, that uh, Tommy plays, and it is each one with just a maybe a shade more difficulty as you go forward. So that's where we're going to start. Tonight, before we get started, we're going to feature somebody. It's a, a three folks out of Canada. And I, it's either the Combiners or the Combiners. But if it's uh, in the farming community up there, I'm going to call them the, combi the Combiners. And it is Michelle, Lauren, and Mark that make up this small acoustic trio. And I ran across them not long ago. They hadn't been on YouTube very long. I didn't check before I got on, uh, started the video today, but uh, uh, they had very, very few subscribers when I saw them. And I, I was shocked. And I even made a comment and said, you have to be brand new to YouTube. That's the only explanation for this. So, but they're very, very good. And I'm going to go ahead and put them up right now and let you check them out. And I'm, I'm going to drop a link to their channel. I would encourage you to go see them. I think they're very, very talented and uh, just genuinely nice, nice people. So without any further ado, here you go. The Combiners. everybody do yourself a favor go visit these folks on their website on their youtube channel i think uh, they are uh, you know i've said it before i'm a sucker for harmonies and they certainly do that well they don't have very many subscribers so let's see if we can bump that up some uh 
I think uh, I think they would appreciate that. They would also appreciate your input, uh, your comments, and uh, and for you to uh, you know like their videos if you like them. And I'm I'd be surprised if you didn't. Okay. All right. Let's get right to this, folks. So we're going to start with the uh, with the intro to this song. All right. So you're going to be in the you heard it at the very very beginning. I played this somewhat part of this tune, all right? So the way Tommy opens this thing up is just, uh, and, and I always make that A minor shape. Go ahead and make it. And I like to use this little finger to kind of hammer on to that number six bass note. And then he goes in, so he hammers on from one to three. So it, on the number six string, third fret, just like that. And then picks up that number five bass note. Then number four. Number six. Number four. Okay. And he ends it on the number four and then kind of starts over again with... So, let's talk through this a little bit. String number six, your bass note. Third fret, hammer on with your little finger. Now, you can do this any way it makes you comfortable. If you want to do it the way Tommy does it, I think he just uh, kind of takes his uh, forefinger there and just frets that uh, number three string, right? And... Uh, uh, mutes the one below it so that you don't accidentally strike it and then he just comes up here with just a slight touch of those bass notes down here with the palm of your hand right there just slight touch on it of course he's using a thumb pick which you are more than welcome to do if you play with one but just you can either pull that like that, or you can just like that, but apply a little bit of force to it. And so now, once he, once you hammer on to that third fret, number six string, you're going to start your bass notes, which is five, four, six, four, five, four. And then you're going to do it again. Okay, I normally do it in the E, the A minor shape. Okay, and that's how that's done. Hammer on number six to the third fret. Then start your bass notes for your A minor. Then Tommy goes ahead and hammers on to that number three uh, fret on the number six string. On the third go round, he does this. Hammers on. Picks up on number three. Brings up his uh, ring finger. I normally pick up all of them. Okay. Now, once he picks up on that number three and hammers on with that ring finger, of course, I'm doing doing all of them. Okay. P. 
pinch, number two, and number four. Then take your pinky finger and lay it on the number three fret, number two string. Once you lay it down on that number three fret, number two string, you're going to pinch number six with it. Then let off that number three and strike number four. Just like that. I think that's where we're going to take it tonight, is we are going to stop there. So let's walk through this again. Okay. Now, number five bass note. Let me play this one little piece right here and then we'll come back and explain that. Now once you once you pinch at number five and number two string with your pinky on that third fret, that's where that nudge comes in. Then you're going to bring it back down and pinch number four and number two with your pinky still on that third fret, second string. Okay, let's do it again. Picking up on number three and hammering on with the number five bass note. Pinching number two in the A minor position. You're pinching number four bass note and number two in your number two string in A minor. You got that four finger down here on the second string first fret. That's where you're just laying the pinky down and pinching six and two because you're laying the pinky down on the third fret second string. Then, then pick up and let off striking that number two back in the normal A minor position. Hit the number four bass note. Boy, that, that makes you go like this, right?
I like to pick it up and then hit that number five bass note. Hit that number five bass note and then pinch your number four bass note and your number two string. Your little finger is still on the third fret, second string. See how that see how that works? Take your little finger up, strike number two and number six. Use your forefinger down here on your picking hand. Pick up on number three. strike your number four bass note okay okay so let's walk through it up to that point very very slowly And I went just a little bit of a step beyond there. But let's bring it and do it one more time up to where we learned. I'll show you that last little piece. Okay. And I ended on the number four bass note. Okay. This is going to get sore if you've not done this before. Uh, but this is a cool tune for you to learn if you are unfamiliar with fingerstyle. Uh, it's just really a great little tune to go in a guitar store and pick up and start playing. Just if you want to check a guitar out, this is a good one, a good tune to do it with. OK, and it's one of the ones I inevitably do when I go into an acoustic room in a guitar store just to sit down and get a good feel for it. Because if this doesn't kill me down here, I know I've got a fairly well uh, a, a guitar that's has the right annotation, if that makes sense. OK. Mm -hmm. And then if it, if it starts bleeding and hurting, well, then I know I don't have the right guitar in my hands. Uh, I, that might be a little, little bit extreme, but you get the idea. Okay, so here we go. Let's do it all the way up to that point. Now, once we do that, we're going to do uh, something similar again. So we stopped on the number four bass note, which means our next bass note, we just came off a six, two, four, right? We did Just came off six to four, so our next bass note is going to be number five. And we're going to pick up again on that A minor. And we're going to do a hammer on on that number three string. Pinching four and two. Now we're going to lay our pinky finger down on the third fret, number two string. Pinching. Two and six. Lift up on the pinky finger on the number two string. Strike number four. That's where we're going to end it tonight. Okay? Because that's right before we do the first little melody run.
Okay. So all the way from start to finish with what we've talked about thus far. That takes us all the way up to what we've learned tonight. It's just going to take us a little time. This one's going to be a lot slower going than the other ones were. And the other ones were pretty slow going, I think. But I think that's why a lot of people are watching this is because uh, I think Johnny L mentioned it uh, to me in a comment on uh, uh, somewhere recently where he talked about, you know, pointing out which strings you're actually on and pinching and and just identifying string by string because I've said it before and it's uh, it's nothing against the folks that are out there teaching finger style that everybody teaches a little bit different but uh, there's a lot of presumptions made I would say uh, when people are teaching finger style uh, I've gone to a few channels and they would go go to a diminished whatever it is and i don't even know what a diminished whatever is you know what i mean so there you go and and so now i'm having to pause the video and go where exactly are their fingers and you know as well as i do that right here looks like i'm making a full a right but my little fingers lifted okay now it's down, now it's up, now it's down, it's up. You can see me moving it now. But when I first set it up there, you know, a, a, a one like a... Oh, I don't know what this is, but you you see my fingers? The, my middle finger looks like it's on the fretboard, uh, but you, it's hard to tell exactly where it is. Uh, but this is some kind of diminished something or another. I can't know. It's in that Fallen Leaf song, you know, where... But it's a some kind of diminished G sharp something diminished. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's not a G sharp diminished. I don't know. Anyway, I can't even spell diminished. And I shouldn't be sitting here talking to you about it, right? But uh, but they will talk about these chords and go go to this chord, and I, you know, I'm at a loss. I don't even know what that chord is, and I can't tell where their fingers are. So immediately, I'm I'm kind of fried and done at that point, you know. Uh, I don't know what resources to go get to figure out what that chord is. So that's why we talk about it a lot. If we get into an off chord that most people wouldn't be familiar with, not a lot of danger in that, my friends, with me. <laughs> but uh, if we do, I'm going to tell you where my fingers are. And I think we have done that on a couple of occasions where we mentioned a chord that wasn't part of a normal playbook for us rookies, right? Uh, more for the more professional folks that know these chords. So if I get into something weird like that, I'm going to identify what it is. Uh, and we do have a few in here uh, that are going to be rather interesting. And I'm going to tell you where my every finger is on those chords uh, because I think it's helpful. Okay. But anyway, hopefully this gets us through the very first part, right? Anyway, it's good to see everybody. Uh, we will have probably a four A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. Okay, that'll probably be what this one will be. There will be because we're just going to eat it a little bit at a time. And then what I would like for you to do is just make a project out of it. Let's just put it together a little at a time. Don't get impatient with this song because if you've never played it before and you're doing it, uh, follow along with what we're doing and don't go scatter off. Uh, trying to figure out how to get all the rest of the song done in five minutes or less. Because if you're new to fingerstyle, you will not do that. You will not accomplish it. All it'll do is confuse you, frustrate you, and make you want to run away from it. So hang with me, okay? And let's do this in little bitty bites and then put them together as we go. And I think you will be the better for it, all right? This is one of the more difficult ones to do. And one reason is because of this... You got to catch it and push. And sometimes if you miss it and get that finger, that little finger, if you catch that string below that fingertip, you've already messed up because you can't push it at that point. Okay. 
So I try to catch it right on the tip of that finger. Ah, you don't bend it there. And you don't want to... Yeah, you want to push it about... What is that? A, is that a, a half step? I don't know what a whole step is and a half step. I think that's a half step. Okay. The key a lot of times is to making sure you're maintaining your bass note at the same time. Remember, everything's on a bass note or between a bass note. All right. So that helps because your brain thinks in time, right? Uh, it has an order to it. Now, that's the way we're used to doing things. Uh, so if you're on or between a bass note, you're on a beat every time, right? Right? Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. God bless. We'll see you next time.